Hey guys, this is Mike Tarala with Click, and in this video, I will present and briefly demonstrate what's new in ClickSense April 2018. In my opinion, the best part of this release are the new capabilities and future possibilities brought about by our new cognitive engine aimed at streamlining and enhancing the creation experience from data to insight in a matter of minutes. In short, the Cognitive Engine leverages augmented intelligence and best practices, along with the loaded data, to recommend or suggest the best visualization for your data. All you need to do is drag and drop measures and dimensions, either on the design canvas or chart objects, and the suggested visualization will display, best depicting your data. Let me give you a quick demonstration. Okay, so I've already created an app and I have data loaded into the app. Not going to get into every aspect in detail because we have detailed videos on this in the community and on YouTube. So quickly, I have all of my dimensions. I'm going to grab a location dimension, in this case country. When I grab country and drop it onto the canvas, by default you can see it created an area map. You can also see that this chart object has a switch where assistance has been turned on. Okay, that allows the Cognitive Engine to help you when you start dragging and dropping measures and dimensions. So for example, if I look for my sales measure and drop it on top of the area map, you can see it now displays the different colors to depict the range of sales. And I take this one step further, I'm going to grab product names and drop this on top of the map. And you can see the Cognitive Engine is suggesting a distribution plot to display that particular measure and dimension combination. The main focus here is to allow people to spend more time analyzing data and gaining insights versus building charts. Okay, so in the next example, I'm going to cover two of the new features. One is the adjustable grid size on the design canvas when you're laying out your visualizations on your sheets. And the other one is the new map object visualization. Okay, so I already have an app created and data has been loaded. Take note on the right in the properties panel, there's a list box here with different grid sizes. Basically, this allows you to select the number of boxes going across and number of boxes going down, which give you more flexibility on positioning and layout and spacing of your objects. So for example, if I choose 30 by 15, that gives me 15 boxes from top to bottom and 30 boxes from left to right. So depending on the form factor or the device that's being used, you can have a little bit more control on how objects are displayed and laid out within your device. And in regarding to the next feature, the map object, which you already got a glimpse of in the previous example, what I'm going to do is go to charts and I'm going to grab map. And this is basically using the technology from when we acquired Adevio maps and we've integrated this map component into ClickSense. So this is not specific to the extension GeoAnalytics. That is still available as an extension and still has additional capabilities. However, this is the beginning of the enhancements to our map object within ClickSense using the underlying technology from Click GeoAnalytics. So in this case here, I'm not using assistance. In other words, I want to have control on how I design the map. And you can see I have various properties map settings and appearance. And I'm not going to go through all of these just because we have detailed videos within the community and YouTube that will further go into this. So as far as layers are concerned, I want to add a layer. I want to add an area layer. And then for that area layer, I want to select a dimension. In this case here, I'm going to choose country. You can see how easy that is there. Now, if I go to my fields list, I can grab sales and drop sales on top and it'll prompt me and guide me on how I would like sales to be represented. I want to use it within my country layer and I want to color by the measure sum of sales. And now I have sum of sales depicted as a color. You can access the different properties from your layers by clicking this area in the header up here. And you can see the different layers will be selected. I want to add another layer. This time I'm going to add a point layer. And for the point layer, I'm going to add city. And now you can see my points. Now this can also be done with simple drag and drop as well. So if I wanted to start out with assistance, 
such as grabbing a field such as country, and then grabbing sales, I can turn off assistance and then have control of the layers. So at this point, if I wanted to grab city, and I could add it as a new layer, add it as a point layer, and then I have the options for those different properties. And you can see I can go back and forth to the different layers by selecting this area in the header up here. So to wrap this up, I'm just going to go to sizes and shapes from my cities. I'm going to represent it as a square. I'm going to go to my colors, turn off auto coloring. I'll make it red, etc. Now, this is just pointing out the cities. I don't have a measure assigned to this. So let's take product count. So I'll grab my product ID. I'm going to use this in the point layer. I'm going to represent the size by a count of product ID. And now the different sizes of the boxes represent the product counts. Okay, so just a quick demonstration of the new mapping component. A couple things to understand is that this also supports on-the-fly uh, geocoding lookups. There aren't any upper data limits on any object. There's support for localization for map background titles. There's drill-down support and even different types of selection schemes. So to give you an example here, as I hover over and I select, I can choose, for example, lasso, or I could even get a measure of distance for the selections. So another improvement that you guys have been asking for, and I know you'll be excited about, is the ability to control numeric abbreviations used with measures when setting the automatic formatting. We have created a new system variable named numerical abbreviation, and this will allow you to control the numeric abbreviation displayed in your measure. So if you want a B to represent billions instead of a G, you simply include a set statement in your load script and you set the numerical abbreviation as follows. Basically what we're doing is looking at the zero placeholders and then assigning a appropriate symbol at the end of the measure. Let me give you a quick example of that. For this example, I'm gonna use the same app that we used in the previous example. So I'm just gonna grab a field and I'm gonna grab sales. And you can see it's displayed as 19.4 million. So maybe I want that to actually say mil. And maybe I want a space after the four. So I'm going to go into my load script. And I'm going to set the numerical abbreviation system variable. And where I have six zeros, right now I have the symbol as M. I'm just going to put a space and type in IL after the M, click load data, and you'll see once it loads, it refreshes, and now it displays my custom abbreviation for my measure. Now, this is only supported when the number formatting is set for auto. If I was just to put this to money, then you have the format pattern below that you can set based off of the certain symbols that we support. Another new capability we added within ClickSense April 2018 is the ability to publish your app to a stream while you are in the hub. Previously, you would have to go to the Click Management Console and use that interface. Whereas now, for example, if you are done with your app, you can right click, select publish, choose the stream, in this case sales, give it a new name if you wish, and then click publish. And now if I go to the sales stream, you can see I have my sales dashboard app published. So you no longer have to do this from the click management console. With the release of ClickSense April 2018, we have also created an add-on subscription service available to our Click Geoanalytics products used with the Click Geoanalytics connector. We call it Click Geocoding. This service can coordinate lookups down to the street level Great for detailed routing analytics, real-time tracking, or even validating addresses of customers in a particular region. Stay tuned for more videos on this topic in the Click community.
and the Click Help YouTube channel. So that's it for this edition of What's New in ClickSense. For more improvements and features in ClickSense April 2018, check out the release notes available in the Click Help site. Please be sure to check out these other great resources to learn more about Click and ClickSense, and please tell me what you think by leaving your comments and questions where this video is posted. Take care, and I'll see you in the Click community and on the next video. Thanks for your time.